when you decided to do this full time, like I know like you were, I, I heard you tell the story where you were like sitting at the YMCA and somebody came and like, you want to take a class, like yeah. you want to teach a class. Like I've seen your energy. Like what was plan B? Plan B was to keep doing what you were doing. It was fine. It yeah. was safe. Like, yeah. right. It, it wasn't yeah. going anywhere. Great. But like, it wasn't yeah. harming you. Yeah. It's just so, so comfortable. You know, you just, it's, you just are, it's so comfortable. And I think if you step outside and I, I do believe um, that having older parents, because they were so much older when they had me, my perspective is slightly different because there, there is a generation in between. So their perspective is different. And so I always had a little broader perspective. And I, I remember, even though like you had no idea what I was doing. And when she said, do you want to teach a class? I'm like, sure. I think, I don't know. <laughs> and like you, I'm like, well, I'll just figure it out. Right. There was always an awareness, probably like you, teaching high school, which is what I did before. It was not going to be my end all be all that teaching fitness, even as I got into it was not just going to be my end all be all. There's always going to be, it was, there was always what's the next, what's the next, how can I amplify this? How can I go further? How can I go further? I always felt like having older parents probably lent itself to me having a broader perspective, or maybe it's just something that, that we have that's innate. Like there has to be something more. I don't know, but I do believe, I don't care who you are there's more in you yes. period in the discussion. You just have to be willing to follow that intuition down there. So you did, and you're drawn into this magnetic force, which that's so fascinating to me. We're going to talk about that. It's a whole other topic <laughs> another time. Uh, and you follow that into what I have to assume also, oh, well, maybe I'll, this, my career will be white house. And then that's not the plan. And then do, 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 do here you are writing a book, being a speaker. Yeah, you know, like I think I think that one of the things that the like insta-fluencer world purports and is so dangerous is that like you have to follow your passion, find right. your calling, like as right. if there's one, you've won, one. one singular for the rest of your life. And I right. think, you know, what that tells us is that is that we can't evolve that like we're finite Ooh. that there's like an end and Ooh. i do believe i always believe that there's another gear i just mm -hmm. i mean we were talking before we started recording about how i ran my first mile of my life when i turned 39 years old like i yeah, I, love I was this. never an athlete i never thought being athletic like I was on the swim team growing up only because you had to be on a sport and I was the kid who was like we need seven people in order to compete let's just drag Laura out of the locker room and put her on the bench like that was who I was it was it was I was I was I DFL'd every every race I ever I, that I ever that I ever swim in and sometimes when the diving team needed an extra they're like well let's just have Laura jump off the board so I'd like do like a cannonball when everyone else is doing like the triple oh swan dives gosh. or whatever I was that just a body <laughs> I mean, I wasn't fat. I wasn't thin. I wasn't like, I was just kind of there, right? Like I was yeah. just, yeah. um, and you know, I, I just turned 50. So I, you know, I like the age of like snack wells and lean cuisines and tab that's health food, right? right? Like I right. like, and you would do like step classes, like women weren't strong. Like, God, right. I wish that I grew up with like JLo and Serena and S right? Simone Biles. Oh my right? God. Like these women are strong and they're powerful mm -hmm. and they're proud and it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I love that I have muscles now. Like that yes. is such a cool thing, but yes. had I stopped evolving when I was 17 years old and I went right. to college and somebody was like, pick a path, pick a major, pick a trade, pick a, mm -hmm. pick a college. And like, okay, that's yeah. the rest of your life. Can yeah. you imagine? Could you like, think about who you were? I know it's, it's, so, that's, what's so interesting to me, this, this whole idea of evolution, this whole idea of personal growth, and the whole idea of seasons. And, you know, when I talk to women, they're like, well, but how do I do this? And how do you do this? And I'm like, well, you, this is a season you're in. And yes. then you're going to grow to another season. And then there's going to be another season. And, and, you know, I was just, when I was talking on this call last night, I said, well, when my parents brought me home from the hospital, we didn't have car seats. So they just put oh, me no. on the floor and yes. I just kind of rolled around as we drove home and we hope we got home safely. Well, guess what? We don't do that anymore because we know better. And when you know better, you do better. We evolve. Right. So if that could happen, we can do that too. And frankly, we should, because if you stop learning and growing with everything that you knew when you were 17 and in high school, well, there's your life. 
And there <laughs> exactly. it is. Which, I mean, have you gone back to any of your high school reunions? Uh, I have not. I <laughs> came from a very teeny tiny little town. And, I, and, and, you know, when you think about that, too, I remember growing up in that little small town. And, and as much as I enjoyed that small town growing up, so safe. I'd ride my bike for hours. I, you know, I could stop at anyone's house and it was just the, the most lovely little small town growing up experience. I always thought, mm, probably not going to stay here. It's probably not going to be where I end up. You knew that even then. That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't that wow. interesting? Wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just I went know. to my, to my 35th high school or 30th, oh, wow. 30th, my 30th, 30th high school 30th. reunion. Yeah. Um, I obviously didn't major in math. I went to my 30th high school reunion. I went to my 10th and my 20th and my 30th. Wow. Um, and, and, okay, but commendable. He, yeah. Well, I mean, I did well, so I want to show off. Right? <laughs> Let's call it spade a spade. Let's just show um, yes. Let's just yeah. say I it. mean, I look better now than I did when I was in high school. So <laughs> again, never was athletic. Um, but here's the thing. Like the people who peaked at 17, the ones who were mm-hmm. awesome, the like high school, you know, like the, uh-huh. like the, like the, the, the captain of the cheerleading team and the president yeah. of the, the, the class, like all the ones yeah. who were amazing were still pretty, they were still pretty good at 10. And by 20, yeah. uh, things were starting, the wheels yeah. were starting to fall off the bus a little bit. And by yeah. 30, they were actually not so happy because they got stuck in that who I am because they peaked yeah. so early. They were told they were awesome so early that they didn't have to figure out who they were. They didn't have to figure out, you know, I, I think that the, like the, um, the, the, like the freaks and geeks and the nerds and the dweebs and the ones who like, didn't go to like makeup school, like girl school and like know how to like do this until they were 40. It's almost like you have to figure out who you are because, you know, I know you had our friend Carrie Lorenz on the show, who's yes. the you know first female F fourteen fighter pilot I mean, in the Navy. Could I mean, be any more badass than that? She, like what? Not only that, do you know you know that she won the head of the Charles when she was in college, like as a rower, as a rower, and she was a D one rower and went to pre Olympic training. So not just not just like fighter pilot. Uh-huh. Amazing badass gets uh-huh. on stage and like full leather head to toe with her giant uh-huh. mane of beautiful brunette hair. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like was an elite athlete in one of the hardest sports that exists. <laughs> so like people like her were forged because they put themselves into deliberate discomfort early in their life. Yeah. But for a lot of us, we don't have to do that. And when we don't have to do that, we don't have to figure out who we are. So mm-hmm. it was really into the reason I brought the high school reunions, because I think it's really interesting when you go back and you see the people mm-hmm. who were more uncomfortable for longer actually mm-hmm. ended up doing better because it forced them to figure out who they are at every age and at every life stage. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have two, I have a 17 year old and a 19 year old right now, and I'm looking at them and they're like, it's, it's a, you know, challenging time to be a teenager. Yes. And, and I look at them and I don't, I want to help them have less pain, but I don't want to help them have less pain. You know what I mean? 